China released its new 3i Atlas images without warning, no buildup, no televised briefing, just a quiet drop of raw data into the public domain. As those images began circulating, NASA remained conspicuously silent. Analysts, journalists, and ordinary viewers alike wondered what the United States was waiting for. Then, almost as if in response to China's reveal, NASA abruptly announced a large-scale livestream event, promoted as a major scientific moment. In China, researchers and space enthusiasts tuned in with genuine curiosity, eager to see whether NASA had captured something extraordinary, something China had missed. Around the world, the event was framed as the latest chapter in a growing technological rivalry, a showcase of which superpower possessed the clearer view of our interstellar visitor. But when NASA finally presented its material, the anticipation evaporated. I'd like to address the rumors right at the beginning. I think it's important that we, we talk about that. This object is a comet. It looks and behaves like a comet and has and all evidence points to it being a comet. But this one came from outside the solar system, which makes it fascinating, exciting, and scientifically very important. This is only the third interstellar object like this that humanity has ever found. Instead of groundbreaking revelations or unprecedented perspectives, the live stream delivered images and explanations that felt strangely familiar, echoing what had already been released weeks earlier. There were no new insights, no exploration of the object's unexplained features, and no attempt to address the questions scientists had been debating for months. For many watching, especially in China, it felt like the climax of a global contest that ended not with a discovery, but with a shrug. China's earlier release of its imagery had set a high bar. While NASA's event relied heavily on polished renderings and familiar viewpoints, China's images provided unusual depth because of their vantage point, a Mars-orbiting spacecraft. Tianwen-1, originally sent to survey the Red Planet, had quietly shifted part of its mission to track 3i Atlas as it passed through the inner solar system. The resulting photographs captured the interstellar object from an angle no Earth-based or Earth-orbiting instrument could match. From Mars' orbit, the geometry of the jets, plumes, and coma appeared strikingly distinct, revealing structures that were masked or flattened from Earth's line of sight. Chinese scientists pointed out several features that stood out immediately. The plume extending from the nucleus appeared surprisingly directional, not fanned out randomly as cometary jets often are. Under different filters, the jets seemed to originate from distinct points on the nucleus, rather than a single outgassing vent, hinting at a complex internal structure. Ground-based observatories in Yunnan and Tibet added complementary frames, showing the object's tail flickering between different configurations, as if responding to external stimuli. And the most eyebrow-raising detail was captured by astrophotographer Satoru Murata, a multi-point jet system observed from Japan, including sunward-facing jets that contradicted typical thermal models. Although Murata is not Chinese, his findings circulated widely in Chinese scientific circles because they supported what Tianwen-1's cameras were seeing from afar. These images gave China a unique sense of confidence. They had something NASA did not, a completely different geometry of the object. Chinese analysts hoped NASA's live stream would provide an equivalent surprise, perhaps a novel wavelength analysis or high-resolution imaging from its deep space assets. Instead, what they saw was the rehash of familiar frames. NASA emphasized its Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter image captured by HiRISE, an image that had already sparked international debate due to its ambiguous plume orientation, but the agency chose not to address the controversy surrounding it. To China's scientific community, the contrast was stark. China had handed the world a set of raw, unfiltered observations. NASA had delivered an event. The online reaction in China was immediate and blunt. Specialists questioned why NASA avoided discussing the contradictions between its own datasets. Public commentators wondered why the world's most powerful space agency offered less clarity than a single Japanese astrophotographer. A common sentiment spread across Chinese academic forums. NASA looked like it was holding back, not leading. It didn't take long for criticism outside China to emerge as well. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, whose work on interstellar objects such as Oumuamua and IM2, has long positioned him as one of the field's most outspoken and data-driven contrarians, published a detailed critique within hours of NASA's livestream ending. In his analysis, Loeb described the presentation as an impressive display of saying as little as possible, 
arguing that NASA chose a conservative communication strategy that emphasized reassurance over scientific curiosity. He did not accuse the agency of deception, nor did he imply any deliberate withholding of information. Instead, he argued that NASA had focused almost exclusively on the most conventional, least controversial aspects of the imagery, while strategically avoiding the features that were raising legitimate scientific questions. To Loeb, it was a case of omission rather than distortion. NASA showed what was easiest to interpret, not what was most important to understand. Loeb's critique was rooted in specific scientific anomalies that had already been documented in independent analyses. He highlighted them one by one, noting that they were not speculative or hypothetical, but visible directly in the publicly released images. First was the sunward-facing plume, visible in both the high-rise image and earlier ground-based photographs, a geometry that contradicts the expected direction of cometary outgassing under standard solar heating. Second was the forward-facing material seen ahead of 3i Atlas's trajectory in the high-rise frame, suggesting that dust or gas was being ejected in a direction inconsistent with orbital motion. Third, he pointed out that the jet configurations appeared stable and non-smeared, which is unusual if the nucleus were rotating at the rates typically observed in small bodies. Fourth, he referenced the unusual CO2 dominant composition revealed by JWST spectroscopy, noting that it did not match the behavior NASA described as typical of comets. And finally, he underscored the brightness fluctuations and short-term photometric spikes that diverged from standard models of thermal activation. None of these observations were obscure. Each had been documented in scientific literature, preprint analyses, or expert discussions in the weeks leading up to the live stream. Several had been raised repeatedly by observers from multiple countries, and in some cases, such as the CO2 anomaly, confirmed independently by multiple telescopes. Yet the NASA presentation addressed none of them. Instead, the agency repeatedly used broad statements like consistent with cometary activity and emphasized the object's comet-like appearance without acknowledging the specific discrepancies that community members were actively debating. In China, where teams had been compiling their own anomaly lists based on Tianwen-1 data and ground-based observations, Loeb's critique was received with particular interest. Chinese researchers had already identified many of the same irregularities. The directional plume, the asymmetric tail structure, the apparent non-random jet geometry. But discussion had remained mostly internal or cautiously academic, partly due to concerns about being perceived as challenging NASA without strong international backing. Loeb's willingness to speak openly and his reputation as a respected figure within American astrophysics changed that dynamic. His commentary gave scientific legitimacy to concerns that many Chinese researchers had been hesitant to voice publicly. In China, where teams had been compiling their own anomaly lists based on Tianwen-1 data and ground-based observations, Loeb's critique was received with particular interest. Chinese researchers had already identified many of the same irregularities, the directional plume, the asymmetric tail structure, the apparent non-random jet geometry. But discussion had remained mostly internal or cautiously academic, partly due to concerns about being perceived as challenging NASA without strong international backing. Loeb's willingness to speak openly and his reputation as a respected figure within American astrophysics changed that dynamic. His commentary gave scientific legitimacy to concerns that many Chinese researchers had been hesitant to voice publicly. In academic forums and Chinese-language science media, Loeb's analysis was widely shared, often with remarks noting that his critique aligned almost exactly with the anomalies Chinese teams had independently observed. For many, the fact that a senior American astrophysicist was calling NASA's livestream a missed opportunity was a signal that the silence on anomalies was not simply an oversight. It represented a deliberate choice to avoid complicating the official narrative. It did not imply wrongdoing, but it did suggest that NASA preferred to frame 3i Atlas in familiar terms rather than confront the full complexity of the data. In that context, China's quiet release of raw images appeared increasingly transparent, while NASA's orchestrated event appeared increasingly cautious. 
The anomalies themselves were significant not because they implied alien technology, but because they violated well-established principles of comet physics. The most striking was the recent one, identified as the twelfth anomaly by Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, which focused on the unexpected stability of 3I Atlas's jets. In conventional comet behavior, jets of gas and dust erupt from surface vents and sweep across space as the nucleus rotates. This rotational motion typically smears the jets into broad arcs or fan-shaped structures. Yet in stacked images of 3I Atlas, the jets appeared sharply defined and held a fixed orientation over millions of kilometers. For an object believed to be rotating every 16 hours, such static, razor-straight jets defied the fundamentals of sublimation-driven outgassing. Loeb's examination of the images raised questions that standard comet models failed to answer. If the jets were produced by sunlight heating specific locations on the nucleus, they should have moved as the body rotated unless the active vent remained illuminated continuously, an unlikely scenario for a tumbling interstellar object. Moreover, some of the jets pointed away from the sun, contradicting any explanation based solely on solar illumination geometry. Loeb considered whether the features could be fragment trails, lingering dust paths left by pieces that broke off. But their precision, directionality, and lack of dispersion were inconsistent with known fragmentation signatures. The jets behaved less like natural plumes and more like tightly controlled exhaust streams, maintaining a deliberate orientation. This twelfth anomaly added to growing concerns that 3I Atlas was not behaving like a typical comet. While Loeb did not assert any technological origin, he emphasized that the observed jet stability demanded a physical explanation beyond the conventional framework. The object's plumes did not blur, drift, or fan out with rotation. They held their course as if governed by internal constraints or mechanisms rather than chaotic sublimation. For scientists already grappling with earlier anomalies, its CO2-rich composition, puzzling plume angles, and brightness surges, this new observation underscored a larger issue. 3I Atlas continued to exhibit behaviors that were orderly where nature expects disorder, coherent where randomness pseudominate. These unresolved anomalies created a sense of scientific limbo. They were not proof of anything exotic, but they were certainly not trivial. And in China, where researchers had access to a different set of observations, NASA's emissions felt even more conspicuous. Chinese analysts began comparing NASA's public-facing statements to its previous technical reports, noting inconsistencies between the two. Some pointed out that NASA's high-rise image showed a plume angle that did not match simulations released earlier in the year. Others argued that the agency's visual explanations contradicted its own published UV spectrographic models. China's reaction was measured but unmistakably skeptical. State-affiliated scientists released commentaries emphasizing the value of global transparency in interstellar object research. The phrase was diplomatic, but its meaning was clear. China believed that NASA had chosen a narrative rather than a complete explanation. Global Times ran an op-ed highlighting that China's images were offered freely without framing or interpretation, subtly implying that NASA's event was more performance than science. Social media discussions echoed the sentiment, with many noting that China's Mars orbit vantage filled observational gaps that NASA did not openly acknowledge. As the debate matured, attention shifted from the imagery itself to the inconsistencies in NASA's messaging. Why did NASA's different data sets not align? Why did high-resolution instruments present conflicting directions for the same plume? Why did some images show multiple jets while others showed only one? China's scientific community pressed these questions publicly, while NASA maintained a cautious silence. In time, the controversy became less about the object and more about the two nations' approaches to scientific disclosure. China's method, release the data first, interpret later, stood in contrast to NASA's more choreographed presentation. Whether intentional or not, the contrast fueled speculation that NASA was smoothing over confusing details to avoid public misunderstanding. But to many scientists, public misunderstanding is part of the process. Data is messy, space is unpredictable, uncertainty is natural.
The final takeaway for the global audience was ambiguous but profound. China had shown what raw data could offer, complexity, asymmetry, and unanswered questions. NASA had shown what institutional messaging could offer, clarity, but at the cost of omission. Neither approach was unethical, both were incomplete, and in the middle sat 3i Atlas, a visitor from another star system, revealing just enough to challenge human expectations, but not enough to answer humanity's biggest questions. In the end, 3i Atlas became more than an interstellar object, it became a mirror reflecting the scientific philosophies of two competing nations. China embraced the unknown, releasing images that raised more questions than answers. NASA embraced certainty, presenting a polished narrative that avoided the messy parts. But the universe is not obligated to be neat. It behaves according to its own logic, its own physics, and perhaps even its own history. The debate will continue as long as new data appears, but if one truth emerged from this exchange, it is this. Anomalies are not threats to science. They are invitations. And whether through Mars orbit imaging or Earth-based live streams, humanity's greatest discoveries often begin where certainty ends.